Good morning, Daniel, and a very happy new year to you, 2023. And as we begin the mission uh, of the Trans-European Division of this year, I want to talk to you for a few minutes just about the strategic aims and values of the TED, and of course, the first overriding uh, value that's to do with hashtag engaged in mission. What does that mean? If we are not engaged in mission, we are not part of what God is doing today, what he has been doing for centuries, for millennia. So God is engaged in mission in the universe because something went wrong and he's in the process of restoring it. And once again, we are one year closer to completion of that. And it helps us to be mindful that if we are only thinking about ourselves and religion is only helping us to make difference in our own lives, it's not what God intended. He wants the whole world to be blessed, the whole universe to be transformed. The priority then, as I'm hearing you, is that for worshippers of God to be passionately concerned about reaching others for Christ. Yes, because we have received something by knowing God and his redemption on, in Christ on the cross of Cal uh, Calvary, because of his resurrection, because of his ministry in the heavenly sanctuary, that is worth sharing with others who don't know about it yet. Can you define exactly what mission is? Mission is uh, telling other people that there is healing available for every one of us. Okay, thank you. We're going to over the next series of interviews, look at the strategic values of the Trans-European Division. We're going to look today at extending love to the whole person. The second one is growing lifelong disciples. And the third one is multiplying communities. But for today, we're going to look at extending love specifically to the whole person. Can you unpack, unpack that for us? You cannot be engaged in mission unless you have received love. You have received love. John says we love because he first loved us. Of course, love in the Bible is a principle, it's an orientation. God is loving and Matthew says that he loves the, the wicked and the righteous. He sends his son, his reign on everybody. So it's a disposition of love, of wishing the best to the person. Doesn't mean just a warm feeling or doesn't mean that uh, you we are capable of treating everybody the same. Of course, uh, we treat our closest family differently than we treat people that we don't know on the other part of the world. But we can have a loving disposition towards all and wishing them the best. So the model for love then has to be Jesus? Or God's love towards us as manifested in Jesus. Okay, as manifested in Jesus. So if we as uh, members want to demonstrate what God's love is like. Jesus is our example. And so that's about grace, and that is about unconditionality. And especially the acceptance. So we need to distinguish between acceptance and approval. Often we have a problem with that. Jesus accepted everybody, doesn't mean that he approved the behavior of any person. But we are accepted unconditionally because we are all God's children created in his image. That's an interesting uh, contrast there, that you can accept a person without approving of them or approving of their behaviour. And that's been a big issue for the church for centuries, right? That's correct. And we still need to learn how to model that. Uh, and we can see clearly that in the ministry of Jesus. Because people then object that, oh, if we accept everybody, then anything goes. No, definitely not. Because that doesn't mean the approval of the behaviour. So I want to accept my friend unconditionally, regardless of who he, regardless of his or her behaviour. Yes, because the behaviour doesn't add or take away the value of someone created in God's image. Our value is given by the fact that we are created as daughters and sons of God in His image, and of course that we are redeemed by Him. So for me, I'm going to use me as if I've got a lot of unlearning still on that. Then sure, because. Uh, people are different, people of different political persuasions, people of political um, with different values. I sometimes struggle with it. Well, I don't want anything to do with them. You know, why would I ever want to embrace them or connect with them? You're saying to me, you need to unlearn on that, right? Not only unlearn, but we need to try to understand. If I want to love some person, 
that I am in close relationship with, I needed to understand where they come from, how they are wired, why do they come to this conclusion, why, what is the root of this behavior. And that helps me to, be, uh, to have a better, more functional and more loving, accepting relationship. And I follow that model because that's exactly what Jesus did. That's correct. And he accepts us as we are, not what we might be. But the purpose of his acceptance is so that we become who we might be. Because he can see the potential, as we said, we are created in God's image, so he can see the potential. Look at the Samaritan woman. Look at the woman taken in adultery in John 8. He sees not only where they are right now, he sees them where they can be, their God-given potential developed fully. And that, that's still a challenge for the church. What does that mean in practice? Someone walks through the doors of our church, they are different from us. They can be different ethnically, they can be different uh, in gender orientation, sexual orientation, they can be different in, in class. What does that actually mean, how we embrace them? We create an environment where everybody is welcome where nobody is judged and where people can change because of this acceptance. And it brings a new dimension to the community because by being different we can learn from each other. We can unlearn certain patterns that we have from the family of origin or because of our church family. We are a new movement born in the 19th century. That's not when God's Spirit started working on the minds of people. So, just as the pioneers had to discover in Minneapolis something that Luther discovered in the 16th century, we need to discover things that God is at work, not only in us, through us, but also around us. So, if this community that people are invited to is radically different, that's actually something very, very bright and cheerful for the Christian community to be, in contrast to a society that actually does point the finger, that does say, you're not included, this is our club. Yes, but radically different is not so much in the statistical behavior of people. We know that uh, Christians have the same, roughly the same divorce rate as non-Christians. Where it is different, as Jesus says, you love people as I have loved you. The new commandment was not new that we should love people. That's an old commandment from Torah, love God and love your neighbor. What is new is the radical aspect of it, this radical unconditional acceptance. So that religion doesn't turn into this exclusivistic club where you are accepted as long as you behave in an approved way, as long as you are just like us. Then there is no diversity, there is only uniformity. You are accepted as long as you look like us, speak like us, eat like us, dress like us, think like us. And that's certainly not the intention. For many of us, this is a spiritual journey. My ability to love the other surely can only be, can only grow the more I experience God's love for me. That's right. And Christianity is in the New Testament presented as a way. That was the first name for Christians. So it's a journey. The metaphor that Paul uses is walking, is putting on a dress so that I can perceive myself in a different light and then others will see me in a different context. So definitely it's a journey and a journey where we are all learning and we are learning not only about ourselves, about others and about God, but we are learning patience, the patience of saints as well. So extending love means to the whole person. How, does, how do we understand that? The story of creation tells us that we are a unit. We are created as a unit, as a whole. Sin influenced us as a unit, both mind, the spirit, the body, the emotional aspects, the relational aspects. When we die, we die as a unit. When we are resurrected, we are resurrected as a unit. In medieval Christianity, you are concerned with uh, saving the soul. Jesus did more healing than he did uh, preaching because he's concerned with the whole being. Jesus is concerned with presenting needs. When people are hungry, he feeds them, and then he gives them the sermon. Now, of course, when they want to take advantage of that and come again for free food, he gives them a sermon on the bread of life and the importance that the Son of Man becomes part of every cell, every part of their inner life. 
So we need to see the interconnectedness. If I trip and hurt my feet, uh, it influences not only how I feel, it influences my spiritual life. It's not that easy for me to pray as it is when everything goes well and smoothly in my life. Can we also say something about um, how scripture, how Jesus also is interested in our temperament and our emotional health and how that affects our overall health? Sure, because we are all wired differently. We have different temperaments, we have different uh, way of expressing our relationships, emotionality, how we process the reality. There is no perfect temperament and uh, all of us together are learning something how to live better with one another. So EQ is as important as IQ in one sense. Definitely. Thank you for sharing this morning, Daniel. Um, in a few weeks' time, I hope to have a conversation again about our second value, which is growing lifelong disciples, and look forward to that conversation. Um, and we are going to learn how we do it together. Interesting. Because being a disciple is not an individual sport, it's something that we do together, just as all parts of our being need to be connected and interconnected together. Collaborative. Yes. Whether it's here, the Union, or in the local church, or whatever, togetherness is the way forward, right? Yes. Excellent. And I'm looking forward to that conversation. So, all that remains is uh, Happy New Year, and I'm sure we want to wish the... Uh, happy New Year to you, David, and Happy New Year to all our listeners, not only on the territory of Trans-European Division, but all, but all around the world where you are watching us. And if you'd like to stay connected with uh, the Trans-European Division and what's happening, uh, go to our webpage ted.adventist.org and there's an opportunity to su subscribe to our news service. Look forward to uh, in conversation with you again soon. Thank you Daniel, thank you viewers.